Good morning. Uh, we'll get started here in just a second. Uh, I'm Caleb. Uh, Will's away, uh, so he asked me to fill in, and I said yes. So, uh, so let's just stand up and get ready to worship. Uh, you can turn around, greet someone, say hello, give them a high five, whatever. We'll get started here in a second.
Those who are helping with the offering will make their way. Father God, we just love you, Lord. And it is an honor and a privilege to be here to worship you, God. So, Lord, we just ask that you bless this offering, God. And do what you will with it, Lord, to advance your kingdom. Yeah. 
We love you, Lord. God, we thank you for your presence here, God. Lord, we just invite you to do what only you can do, to show up and show out amongst us, oh God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. May your name forever be the praise upon our lips, oh Lord. Thank you, Ben. Hello, I'm Jerome Goddard. I'm not the preacher. So David asked me to fill in for him today. He's out. My wife, Rosella, in the back. It's a delight to be with you today. I told David, I said, I'll be glad to speak. I said, but I'm not going to pace around up there on that stage like you do. I'd fall off. I, I would. I'd fall off. And if I fell off, I'm so tall, you'd have to take me to the airport to stand me up. It'll come to you later. It'll come to you later. I want to read the scripture today, but I want to say a prayer first. Almighty God, we ask you to come and be with us today. Thank you for the worship. Thank you for Caleb and the band. Thank you so much for your very presence. Amen. The first scripture is from Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Very short verse, very powerful verse. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, that was the king, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Our next reading comes from Second Chronicles chapter 20, and this is a very familiar passage to many of you about Jehoshaphat and what happened in his situation. So it's a little bit long, but bear with me. I want you to get a, uh, an understanding of the <laughs> terror that was facing Jehoshaphat. Chapter 20, verse 1. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. 
It is already at somewhere. I can't say these big names. The people of Judah came together to seek the Lord. This huge army is coming toward Jehoshaphat to defeat them. So the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem at the temple, and this is what he said. This is his prayer. This is Jehoshaphat's prayer. O Lord God our, of our fathers, are you not the God of heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether through the sword or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, Whose, ter whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when we came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the, out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph. He stood in the assembly, and this is what the prophet said. Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up the pass of wherever. In other words, exactly where they will be, the prophet knew. And you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight in this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from whoever stood up and with a very loud voice praised the Lord. Early in the morning they left for the desert of Tekoa, and as they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah, people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise Him for the splendor of His holiness as they went out at the head of the army saying, Give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. Interesting passage, you've probably heard this before. You probably have heard it in its context of he put a choir out in front, right? He put a choir out in front of the army. How would you like to be in that choir? Out front. I wouldn't mind being in a choir, but I'd want to be at the back. You know, let the army people go first. But he put the choir out in the front, praising the Lord as they went forward. So anyway, we want to talk today about doing things God's way. Doing things God's way, not our way. There have been times in my life when I faced problems or difficulties, doubts, fears, whatever, where I tried to fix it myself, do something about it myself, bring about my own power or friendships or whatever to get it fixed. And it didn't work, or it didn't work very well. People back in the Bible days did the same thing. They've done this. This is humanity. People have done this forever trying to fix their problem in their own ways. I'll give you two quick examples, two quick ones. There's tons of them. King Saul, back in the Old Testament, was in a war or something, and he needed a sacrifice to be made. It's like a ceremonial thing before they could start or something. So the prophet was delayed. 
I don't know if the subway was slow or what, but the prophet was delayed and couldn't get there. So Saul kept saying, you know, with his little sundial watch, you know, where is the prophet? I can't get this sacrifice done. I need this. So he finally said, well, I'm the king. I'm the king. I can do whatever I want to do. So he made the sacrifice himself. And this, the Bible says, was greatly displeasing to the Lord. Greatly displeasing to the Lord. He tried to fix this his way, didn't he? I'll give you another example. You may remember this. In the Old Testament, they thought God was where? Where was God? Anybody want to impress us? Where was God? Obviously in the temple, but where was God in the temple? In the ark. Have you ever seen the ark? You know, Raiders of the Lost Ark. They thought God was in that box. The presence of God. Of course, God was everywhere, but they thought the presence of God was especially in that ark. They were in a battle one time and started losing. Started losing the battle. And somebody said, what are we going to do? They said, well, go get the box. (laughs) Go get the box. If you go get the box and throw it out front, then God, God will have to win. Right? So they put the Ark of the Covenant out front, sort of pitched it out there, hoping that that would work. Well, guess what happened? The enemy captured the Ark. The enemy grabbed the box and ran. So all the people of Israel just said, Oh my gosh, it's over. God is gone. We've lost God. God is gone. It didn't work. The box was captured. I think God did that just to prove a point. He's just showing them. You know, you think, how stupid that they would think you just throw this box out there and it'll work. But you know what? We do that. We do stuff like that. We try to manipulate God. Everybody in here tries to manipulate God in their own way. We do. We try to manipulate God. Do this, say that, turn around three times, wave wave the Bible over it. You know, we do stuff. We do stuff to try to manipulate the God of the universe. And it turns out that we're the God. See? It's supposed to be God is the God. We're the servant. So anyway, we do this all the time. There's lots of examples of it. So this Zechariah verse... At the beginning, our first verse I read, is saying none of that matters. Power, strength, politics, money, that's not really where it's at. What it's saying is, it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. When God speaks, when God breathes, when God moves, it's fixed, it's worked, it's changed. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. So don't trust in boxes, don't trust in arcs, don't trust in armies, don't trust in power, don't trust in money. Trust in God. Trust in God's spirit to change things. We try to fix things with our own strength, our own minds, our own money, whatever. But it's really only God who can touch you and change you. You know, one time I heard a guy say, it was profound. He said, I've seen God do more in five minutes in somebody's life than a psychiatrist could do in 20 years. Now, I'm not saying psychiatrists aren't good. I'm not saying that. That's good. I would go to one. (laughs) I probably need to go to one. I'm not against them. But it's true. God can do stuff. God can touch you. God can help you. God can set you free. Now, this story of Jehoshaphat that we just read, it's the perfect example of the Zechariah verse. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. These three armies combined were coming toward Israel. Three armies combined. Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. They were all coming together to this little country to beat them up. You know, we we don't really understand the terror involved in that. We don't understand that. We live in a country 
that really has not had a war on its grounds in a long, I guess, never have we been invaded. I guess maybe 1812, there was the British invaded some. But we've never really had a country come invade us like, like you know, Red Dawn or something like that. We've really never had that happen. And it's a terrifying thing. Plus two, back in the day, back in the Old Testament, they didn't stand from a distance and shoot a gun, you know, boom, boom, and kill somebody a mile away or shoot a missile or drop a bomb and blow up people from a distance. You know how they kill people? Face to face. They killed you face to face with a stick or a spear or a sword. Can you imagine somebody hit you with a sword? Cut you. Well, it won't be. I better be nice. Just cut you up. I mean, it's not fun. Wars were not nice. Wars aren't nice now. Wars have never been nice. But they were especially brutal a long time ago. So these people were coming to attack them. You know what they used to do back in the day? They killed everybody. They just killed everybody. They might keep some of the young people as slaves or servants. They might keep some of the uh, women. I don't know. I mean, but they just killed people. They often killed everybody. And so this is what they did. There was no Geneva Convention. You couldn't say, oh, the Geneva Convention says you have to treat me as a whatever, you know, wave a little flag. They just said, what you waving the flag for? And <laughs> so, I mean, this was really terrible. And we miss that. When we read this, we miss that. These armies were coming to annihilate, totally annihilate this little country. And so this is scary. And so... They prayed. It says they all prayed. They all fasted. They all stood before the Lord. It says they stood before the Lord. Men, women, and children. They stood before the Lord. For hours, I assume. They're just standing there. God help us. We're in trouble. God help us. Would we do that today? Would we stop what we're doing and stand before the Lord? I don't know. They put a choir out front. <laughs> you know, blessed be the name of the Lord, something like that. Just, well, we're going we're gonna to go down praising. And God did a great miracle that day. As they praised the Lord, God somehow fought for them or with them, and they defeated this army. Now, this story can be personalized. This story can be personalized. Look at the prayer. You could make this prayer your own in whatever situation you're facing today. You could make this prayer your own. Look at this, what Jehoshaphat said toward the end of the prayer. He said, Oh God, will you not help us? We have no power to face this army attacking us. You could change that and say, I have no power facing, and just write in whatever it is you're facing. You could write that in right there and say, I have no power to face blah. I don't know what to do. He said, we don't know what to do. You could say, I don't know what to do. My eyes are on you. They said, our eyes are on you. You can make that your prayer. You can personalize that. We don't know what to do, but God knows what to do. So what's the take-home message from this thing? What am I trying to get across to you today? God is our source. God is our help. Not doctors, not scientists, not bankers. I'm not against any of these things. But... God has to help us ultimately. It has to be God ultimately that helps us. God works through medicine. God works through doctors. God works through whatever these mechanisms are. But it's God is our source. And that's what we got to remember. God is my source. God is my helper. We got to learn to do things His way. We got to let Him touch us. We got to let Him work. 
You've got to let him do things, provide for us, guide us, help us, heal us. This doesn't mean just disconnect. It doesn't mean just disconnect. Say, so, well, the Lord knows where I am. <laughs> he knows where I am. He'll work it out somehow. It doesn't mean that. It's sort of like, well, like a zombie. Well, the Lord will work it out somehow. It's not that. We shouldn't go around all disinterested and detached. We do have a part to play. Our part to play is to seek God and see whatever He wants us to do in the particular situation. And that's the point I'm trying to make. Notice in this Jehoshaphat story, it said this time you don't have to fight the battle. Did you see that? It said this time you don't have to fight the battle. This time you don't have to fight the battle. Sometimes they do have to fight the battle. They did fight. They did have war. But it said this time you don't have to. You just go up to such and such a ridge into such and such a valley and you just wait and see what I'm going to do. So they did what the Lord said for them to do. And they praised God you know, on the way. He said, this time you won't have to fight. So there are times you do have to fight or whatever it might be. Sometimes you do have to do something. You know, this is an interesting little study. You ought to do it. Get the Bible and look at the miracles in the Bible and see how many times the person receiving the miracle, had to do something to get it. You ought to do a little study on that. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Very often, the person had to do something first. You know, some of you older people might remember Oral Roberts. Like when I was a kid, Oral Roberts was one of these TV evangelist guys. And he back. He started in radio way back. I wasn't in the radio era, but era. But I remember hearing about this. And he'd say, "Just stretch forth your hand and put it on the radio as I pray." And I thought, when people told me that, I thought that's stupid. Like God's gonna go through the radio? He said, "Just put your hand out on the radio." And I'm thinking that's stupid. But the older I get, the more I see, that's not so stupid. That's the person having to do something as an act of faith. That was an act of faith by the person receiving. Now, I said this about looking in the, in the Bible at the miracles and seeing what people had to do. Let's just do a few of them. There's a ton of these. There's tons of them. You remember the first miracle Jesus did? What was the first miracle? Water into wine. They said, we haven't got any more wine. He said, fill up the pots. Remember that? Fill up the pots. Then take some of the, dip it out and take it to the, whoever it is, the kings or whatever. When did the water become wine? Well, I don't guess anybody knows. <laughs> Sometime between filling up the pot and the person drinking it, it turned into wine. It doesn't say when it turned into wine. They had to do something, though. They had to fill up the pots and do the, what it said. Do you remember the ten lepers? The ten lepers who were healed of leprosy. They came to Jesus and said, Have mercy on us, God, and Jesus. He said, Go show yourselves to the priest. They had to go show themselves to the priest and demonstrate that they didn't have leprosy anymore. The priest was like a health person charge of health. So he said, go show yourself to the priest to demonstrate that you're healed. Were they healed when he said that? No. When did they get healed? Somewhere between turning and running and getting there, they were healed. Do you see that? There's tons of these things. It's all in the Bible. The widow's oil. You Remember the widow's oil? She just had a little bit prophet said, get a bunch of jars and fill them up. And she said, I ain't got me that much. He said, get a bunch of these jars and fill them up. She said, I ain't got me that much. 
But as she poured it, it multiplied. It multiplied when she did what she was told to do. There's a lot of these. A lot, lot, lot of them. Naaman the leper. Remember Naaman the leper? Just humor me somebody. Just go, mm, oh yeah, I was thinking about Naaman last night. <laughs> Naaman the leper. He came to the prophet. He was from another country. He came to the prophet and said, I've got this illness. You know what? The prophet didn't even come out there and pray for him. And the prophet said, go dip yourself in the river Jordan seven times. He got mad. He got all mad and said, well, I was thinking he would. This is really in the Bible. He said, I was thinking he would come out there and go, woo, 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 woo. That's what he says, okay? Maybe not in so many words, but that's what he said. He, he, he said, well, surely the man would come out and do something. He said, no. He just told you to go dip in the Jordan. He said, I'm going home. And his servant said, well, look, it wouldn't hurt to try. I mean, just do what the man said, do. So he went and dipped in the river Jordan seven times. When was he healed? Somewhere along the way or in the dipping or something. So all of this means, these are examples for us. This means that God does it different ways, different times. And sometimes you have to do something. Sometimes you don't have to do anything. The Jehoshaphat story, they didn't have to do anything but watch and trust. But sometimes you do have to do things. So the main thing is this. The main thing is to seek God with all our hearts and open up to Him and entrust our problems into God's care and let God work them out. And, and listen, I know that sounds strange, but listen to God. And do what he says do. Now, I'm not talking about an audible voice. If you start hearing audible voices, I mean, I'm not saying God couldn't do that. But they got medicines for that, you know. If you hear too, too many voices, you know. God might speak that way. But for the most part, God speaks through others. He speaks through sermons. He speaks through the Word of God. He speaks through music or whatever. He speaks to our hearts. And find out what God is saying to do. And then do it. Do it. To the best of your ability, figure out what God is saying to you to do. And then do it. I'm going to ask the band to come back for the response song. And this is what I want to challenge you to do today. I want to challenge you to, in your chair or at this altar, come to God in, in childlike faith. Say, God, I'm having this problem. These armies, these problems are big and huge in my life. And I'm asking you to show me what to do because this army is big and I don't know what to do. I challenge you to do that today. That's your challenge. I'll come back and say a brief word at the end. Yeah. 
You know, a lot of Bible verses and a lot of Bible passages and, and stories, they have double meanings, triple meanings sometimes. And one of the most interesting ones, I was telling Roselle this the other day, you, remember, you know the story where Jesus turned the water into wine? When Jesus turned the water into wine, they first, when he ran out of wine, they came to Jesus' mother and they said, you know, we don't have any, we don't know what to do. And this is what she said. And people just read right over it. They just read right over it. He said, she said, Mary said about Jesus, whatever he tells you to do, do it. That's what it said. I'm going to pull that out of context. <laughs> I'm going to pull that out of its context and let that be the word of God for you today. That's the word for you today. Whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Let's bow for the benediction. Almighty God, may we listen to you. May we submit ourselves to you this week. Draw near in our faith. Draw near to you with childlike faith and trust and ask for help and get help and guidance in the midst of our own personal armies and strifes and mountains. God, come. God, help us. Encourage us. Lord, draw us. Help us even want that and care for that this very week. I pray your richest blessings on everybody that hears this, people here and those that hear it on the television. I pray for your many blessings. I pray for your comfort and peace to be with us. And protection upon us this week. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.